Hey, Angela. Hi, Francesca. So good to see you. I'm excited that we're going to be able to connect and have a great conversation. I think what I really appreciated about the film was that people were able to see that their vote mattered because you know, Mayor Tubbs is doing so many great initiatives that are working with young people, that are working with um, the homeless population. But I know a lot of people feel like their vote doesn't matter. And I think because this film was really talking about the importance of local elections, I think that's something that we kind of have to talk about because the presidential election, of course, is important, but it's not the be all end all. And I think it's important to remind people of that so that they don't feel disillusioned I'm curious to know about the first time that you voted. Well, I um, fortunately used to go to the polls often with my parents. And so we used to get fake ballots as kids. That's so cute. <laughs> I remember like George Washington was on my ballot. I was like, dad, he's dead. I want to vote for the, <laughs> you know, the living people. What I remember is how often politics was discussed in my home. I recognize now at 40 that it was, it's a point of privilege, that everyone's parents weren't talking about activism and ways to ensure that black people had a path forward and all people had a path forward and that we had to go vote. But I remember as soon as I turned 18, my dad was like, you gotta register. And then he's always like, election day is such, you know, he was that, he's that dad. So my first election was the 2004 election. And as you know, that was, uh, there was a big upset that year. And to add insult to injury, I'm from Florida. So we took a large amount of blame for that election. That was really hard for me. And I think I liken that to what happened in 2016, where a lot of people have felt like voting wasn't worth it. We watch what happens with the presidential election and you think, well, one vote means nothing. But when you're talking about your local elections, where sometimes the vote matters by like 100 or 50 people, I mean, just reaching out to your friends and family um, can make a really huge difference. Are there any specific myths around voting that you feel like are some of the big ones that we kind of have to dispel as soon as possible? Yeah, I think one that comes to mind immediately is uh, I shouldn't have to vote. My vote doesn't matter anyway. Right. My vote doesn't count anyway. And I think, um, you know, I understand, especially when we talk about the presidential election, why people say that. When you think about the Electoral College, um, and how it was stood up, how we, Francesca, were not considered fully human for the purposes of electoral vote counting, I certainly understand why people feel like that with the presidential election. However, that is not true. Um, and while I totally agree with the people who want to abolish the electoral college, I'm with y'all, yeah. it's still here right now. Yeah. It's still here. And so sometimes, unfortunately, we have to operate within the systems that exists. We can't protest the system up to a, um, abolition, right? You have to understand the rules and play the game to abolition. When we talk about our vote not counting, it doesn't matter anyway. We can look at a deeper psychological connection to that. That so many times, um, whether you're black, brown, white, indigenous, whatever, you have been led to believe throughout your life that you are not worthy that you are insignificant. Election day isn't just about the candidates on the ballot. There's also referendums and initiatives and other things for us to vote on, ideas, right? So I think about what uh, Michael Tubbs is doing around guaranteed basic income, these big ideas that normally, right, uh, candidates are discouraged from having these thoughts, from pursuing something that makes people uncomfortable and may upset a system. And sometimes those ideas make their way on to um, ballot. How do people find out what's on the ballot? Because, you know, again, so many people are just thinking about that presidential election. They're not thinking about or even uh, cognizant of the fact that there are other things on the ballot. I think it's so cool that your parents were doing a, 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 a fake ballot with you so that you were having a, some sort of idea of what you could be looking forward to. But for people who are voting for their very first time, or again, the people who are maybe disillusioned with the process, do you have any suggested resources that people can turn to to find out what's on their ballot and actually understand what they're looking at? There's this handy dandy thing we have these days where you can look it up on the internet really quick. There are so many partners out there now that are just working on behalf of voter education. So there's vote.org, 
There's when we all vote. There's rock the vote. Most counties have election guides to give you an understanding of who each candidate is, what the ballot initiatives are, and the pros and the cons, as well as just the general fact-based understanding of the initiative or who the candidates are. We did an episode of my show about voter ID, and there were so many people that were fired up about this idea that everyone has an ID, and it's just so easy to have an ID. And why don't you have an ID? If you don't have an ID, then clearly you shouldn't be allowed to vote. And it's just infuriating. People don't realize that just because something is easy for you or has been easy for you, it doesn't mean that it's easy for everyone else. There can be many hurdles in place for someone who wants to exercise their vote, but is is being boxed out because they don't have an ID. Yes, that is definitely a thing. Also, there's some, um, some urban living privilege that exists around um, voter ID because in rural parts of the country, I remember in particular there was a um, some place in Texas where they said the closest place to get an ID was 250 miles away, and I don't think that people always understand that it's it can be very very difficult. The pandemic it's making it extra difficult because you want to make sure that you are safe. For folks who are essential workers, who are working in jobs where things aren't as flexible, what kind of encouragement can we give to them to, one, know what their rules are in their states, and two, to ensure that they'll, they turn out in spite of all of the things that will make it so much harder for them to vote this, uh, this time? Yeah, it's really difficult. You know, I requested an absentee ballot for our primary and it didn't come until the day of the election. And I think that making sure that you don't wait until the day of the election to make sure that you are registered and that you know where you're supposed to go and being aware of the times, uh, what time it, the polls open, what time they close. And again, doing that extra homework to say, how long is it going to take me to get there? Um, can I do a carpool? Uh, can, do I need to take public transit? If people should have the right to vote, which I think so many of us agree, why would we try to make it more difficult? Why are you trying to make it as hard to vote as it is to say, get a gun, right? And these are, these are the things. So again, tying this back to this documentary um, and to Michael Tubbs, like, you want people who are progressive thinking and solutions oriented in office to say, I know how you all have been doing things, but I got some things to shake it up a little bit. When I was watching the documentary, I was just so inspired by the fact that someone so young wanted to be a part of this process. When I was 26, I was absolutely not as motivated not as driven, not as knowledgeable at all. I'm curious for people who are watching this conversation or who have hopefully watched the documentary, what words of encouragement would you offer for someone who's seeing Michael Tubbs' story and saying, wow, if he can do it, maybe I can do it too, but I don't even know where to start to engage in this process and, and hopefully be somebody that gives back to my community in a seriously impactful way. If there's something that you see in your community, um, something you see in your state, something you see in the country or the world that you just want to see changed, I dare you to reach out to change it. And I think so often we uh, operate in isolation, feeling like, oh, this thing is so big, but I got to do it by myself. That's not true. Uh, I would also challenge folks to go out and look to building coalitions to stand in solidarity with like-minded people, to really move the needle on the things that you want to change. I often wrestle with the positives and the negatives of social media and the internet. Like there's so many amazing things and connections that can happen, but it often feels really scary and overwhelming and depressing when you get enveloped in the internet. But I think one of the really amazing things is that we have a wealth of resources available and ways to connect with other people who can supplement our knowledge. And that's why I think this documentary is so powerful because I finished watching it and I felt like I can do, I'm gonna do some stuff. Like he was doing his speech to the graduates. I felt like he was talking to me. <laughs> I love that so much because whether fighting for justice looks like educating our people, whether it means sharing a perspective that maybe was a tremendous blind spot for someone else, 
or it is calling people to the carpet and calling people to accountability and to transparency when it's needed. Um, that is a crucial part of this process. Voting is but one piece. If we're just honest, voting is the least we can do. We all must exercise our franchise. And I think that is the ways in which we will really see change happen. When we do that and we're committed and we're disciplined and we don't let shame or worthiness get in the way. Yes, absolutely. I'm so glad that we were able to have this conversation. Me too. Thank you so much for making time to do it. I'm grateful.